Hello everyone, welcome to the session. In this particular video, we will talk about the implementation of QData Q structure using the arrays as well as with the help of a linked list. I hope that before coming to this video, you already have watched the uh, previous video where we have talked about the theoretical understanding of Q-based data structure, right? So what is Q? We have understood that there is something called as FIFO kind of implementation which is there in this kind of a data structure. The full form of FIFO is first in, first out. The major operations that we have in this data structure is insertion and deletion, which we call as NQ and DQ. And how we can do that, what's the pseudocode behind that, what's the logical intuition behind that, all these things we have covered up pretty well. Now, let's get started with the implementation of this Q-based data structure. Okay. Now we can consider a scenario where suppose I am having a, uh, I used to buy a mutual stocks, right? So suppose I want to create a queue, uh, which basically contains the company name or the price, price of the, I would say mutual stock. Let's take the price of that. So what I can do here is that I can take maybe one list of ICICI, uh, Prudential, uh, prudential mutual stock mutual stock I will create a list of that okay and what I can do is that let me copy the name of this particular mutual stock and suppose I want to do the insertion here so what I will do is that I'll try to do the insert function so here basically I am doing the I would say NQ operation NQ operation in a queue using an array using an array data structure in Python perfect now suppose I want to do the insertion at what index suppose at zeroth index I want to insert the element 12 after that again I want to do the insertion at again zeroth index 16 I want to do the insertion maybe again at zeroth index suppose 19. This is the way where we are trying to insert the elements inside this ICICI Prudential Mutual stock and if suppose I want to see this stock now what's the stock summary. So what I am seeing is that which came first 12 after that 16 after that 19. So now if I will try to apply the pop operation inside this particular queue, so what do you think should be popped out first? First in, first out. So we all know that whenever we are trying to implement this data structure queue, we all know that this implements FIFO, which is nothing but first in, first out, can I say? So here if you will observe which particular stock price I have inserted at the very first end. I have inserted 12 at the very first end. So if I will apply the pop operation, 12 should, should be the one which will be deleted first. And as you can see, this is what is happening inside this data structure. Can I say? So I'm popping the very first element. Now if you will apply the pop operation again, so 16 should be deleted. Now if you will see, we are left with only one uh, stock price. And again, if you will apply the pop operation, you will be able to get the 19. Now, if you will apply the pop operation, you will be able to get the error because now you will be having an empty list. So here, if you will observe when you are doing a deletion, this is something where you are trying to do a DQ operation in the Q data structure in the Q data structure. Can I say? Right? So, so this is something that we are trying to do here. Now, once it is done, this is basically with the help of an array based data structure. And we all understood that whenever we are trying to implement either stack or queue uh, with the help of array based data structure, in Python it simply implements a dynamic array where whenever the size of the element is higher so what will happen is that usually it will try to uh, basically generate a new space 
new array which is of the double size as comparable to the previous array and first of all it will try to copy all the elements so it's a lot of task which is which it, it tries to do internally and i don't want to do that i am not happy with that even though i am not getting that kind of error called as out of uh, index bound something like that but still it is taking a huge amount of time to do a task for me because whenever uh, i will be out of space first of all it will try to create a new space of double size then it will try to copy the elements and it is a very hustle kind of a thing which is happening here so why not why not to go for a data structure which is linked list which basically does not usually allocates the memory in, in the form of a contiguous manner so what we can do is that we can try to do the nq operation again nq operation again uh nq operation in the q data structure using the linked list how we can do that using the linked list how we can do that so here we can do from collections we can import simply dq from collections we can import simply dq right after that what we can do is that we can simply try to take the variable which is dq and then we will try to maybe let me try to run this if i will try to see how many operations this q is having you can clearly see so this dir will tell you the number of operations inside the uh collections dot dq collections dot dq in python so here if you will observe what i will try to do i want to append left so in order to make that implementation of fifo to happen so what i will do here is that i will try to append append left the data is again i can take the same data maybe uh i was having 12 16 and 19 so if i will do like this 12 is the followed by if I, I want to insert let me try to see so i think we can't write like this so let me run like this so i inserted 12 at the very first go and after that i am inserting 16 followed by the value 19 if i will insert this and if i will try to see the q here it is something which is exactly equal to the insert that function that we will we will try to apply right uh, what i will do is that i'll try to pop now so this was the queue that we have i don't know how it is 12 uh two times let me try to reinsert it again okay it is again and again appending perfect so what we can do here is that we can restart and run all i think that would be better uh yeah so here if you will see now we will be having 19 16 and 12 inside the queue and if you will try to pop the element so if you will observe here here if you will observe what we are trying to do here actually the nq operation inside the uh, q data structure is happening can i say now if suppose i want to pop the element i want to apply the pop operation inside the inside the q data structure so here if you will observe you are simply trying to apply that pop operation if you will apply dot pop you will be able to get 12 so 12 is something which you have inserted at the very first and when you are you are applying now the pop operation 12 is something which is going at the very first so here if you will observe again the fifo kind of operation is happening fifo operation is executed right okay so again if you will try to apply the pop operation same thing will start happening i hope that you will be able to get the understanding that how we can apply the uh, or implement the queue with the help of a uh, collections.dq in python now what we can do is that i can say to you that just create a class just like the way we did in the stack create a class of queue with its with its methods whatever you want to create so suppose i will create one class named as q and here i can define the init method right 
here i can define the init method and inside that i can say self dot data or you can say self dot buffer is equals to dq so here you can again initialize that thing now suppose i want to do the nq operation here nq here you can say what is the data you want to insert so what you can do you can simply try to use that function which we are using at the above end up and left right i can use the same function so what i will do is that self dot buffer dot append left and here what i can do is that i can simply pass the data that i want to insert right that is the thing that we can do here after that what we can do uh, suppose i want to see the whether the queue is empty or not for that again uh, you can just pass the current queue that you have and you can see you can return simply what is the length of the self dot buffer and if that length is uh, i would say equal equal to 0 so it will return to me true otherwise it will re return to me the value as false otherwise i can also check the size of the queue that we have inside that what i can return is i can simply return the length of the self dot buffer right uh, apart from that one can also apply the operation of dq again it's a important operation that we want to do so again what we want to return here is the value of self dot buffer dot we can apply the pop operation here so if i will run this thing uh, and if i will try to create the object of this class q now if suppose i want to do nq here let me try to just do that same prices uh, maybe 12 16 and 19 uh, i want to insert 12 then uh, i want to insert 16 and then i want to insert maybe 19 now if suppose i want to see the size of this particular queue it will be 3 suppose i want to apply the dq operation i think this is the same spelling i'm using so it will delete the element as 12 now if i will try to see the size of the queue it should come out as 2 not 3 right so what i'm saying here is that either you can call the function step by step like the way we did above or what you can do here is that it would be better that if you will create your own class and define your own functions inside the queue based data structure overall uh cut long story short it's a very basic kind of a data structure which is helpful in the scenarios where you want fifo kind of implementation where you want that whichever element you are inserting at the very first you want that element to be out at the very first end right now what's your assignment task here your assignment task here is could you tell me could you tell me the examples where in real life actually queue based data structure is implemented for example if you remember in the stack i gave you the example of undo operation i gave you the example of function callings i gave you the example of uh, so many things right uh, for example url based things i demonstrated you can you give me any example where in real life uh, data structure this queue is implemented where in real life the scenario of FIFO is actually going on and if we, we can't implement uh, that scenario using any other different data structure and if we implemented also that was not an optimized way that will take a long amount of time here if you will observe one thing uh, whenever we are talking about stack or the queue the insertion and the deletion so here one thing that we have observed overall is that that whether we are talking about a stack data structure and as well as the queue data structure when i'm saying insertion and deletion both are somehow taking the constant time complexity that we have observed but when you want to access any element you want to access any element or you want to search for any element obviously in that case it will not take big o of n it will take big o of uh, it will not take a big of one sorry constant will not be happening here when you want to search an element you need to explore all the elements specifically when you are applying for a, a data structure called as linked list suppose you are doing an implementation using linked list which we have seen is an optimized way as comparable to an array given a situation 
So in that particular case, for sure in worst case scenarios, you will get bigger of an as the time complexity, right? So this is one of the most important thing that you should take care in your head because maximum number of time when we ask to the students that could you tell me what is the time complexity of insertion and deletion in stack and queue they usually say big of n i don't know why it is constant it is constant right we have seen uh, via implementation as well and via theoretical understanding as well so constant time complexity is there right with this i would like to end this particular session hope you guys are able to understand the stack and queue data, data structure now and you can easily able to solve any of the interview based questions in the upcoming interviews i'll also try to solve few of them uh, in, in the upcoming classes but uh, uh, we'll try to see that how basically we can we can think of that whether we will apply a stack data structure or whether we can apply a queue based data structure but till now bye bye and uh, take care. Happy learning to all. Bye-bye everyone. Uh, I'll see you all in my next upcoming video.